Hello, Sparkman here, and I'd like to welcome you to Frames for Dummies. I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know to get started with frames for Red Power 2. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to briefly go over the crafting recipes that you'll be needing. All right, so in order to make an actual frame, you're going to need sticks around a brass ingot. You're going to need uh, iron slabs, which is by cutting a iron block with a handsaw of some kind. You're going to need to cut those iron slabs into iron panels, which uh, have a couple of uses. For First of all, uh, you're going to use your saw on the side of the panel to cut it into iron panel strips, for one thing. And you probably also will need some iron covers as well. We'll go over that later. Uh, panels and covers are very important in frames, uh, more so than they've been in the past, just for covering up tubes and wires and things like that in Red Power. All right, so here's what you're going to need. You also need a diamond panel. You're going to cut that the same way. You will need a diamond handsaw, I believe, in order to do that. Uh, so you're going to make the diamond panels the same way as you make the iron panel just by uh, cutting a uh, diamond block up. You're going to need those iron panel strips around there. That's going to make you a diamond draw plate. The draw plate is a tool similar to the handsaw where you use it on the crafting table and it has multiple uses. Alright, so you're going to use your diamond draw plate on copper ingots and that will give you fine copper wire. Again, this diamond draw plate has more than one use. Alright, so you're going to use your fine copper wires along with some iron bars and an iron ingot in the middle. That will give you copper coils. You will need two of those for each frame uh, motor. Uh, this will actually yield a blue electric motor. So you've got your iron ingots along the sides, two copper coils here, and then a blue alloy ingot on the bottom. When you combine all those together, you put the blue electric motor in the middle, some more iron ingots, iron ingots down the bottom corners, and brass ingots on the side, and blue, blue alloy on the bottom. That will yield you one frame motor. Very expensive to build, but uh, well worth it, I think. They're, uh, they're pretty awesome. All right, and we're going to go ahead and skip to the next portion. Give me a second. Okay, so we're going to go over what... Uh, frames can do and frame motors and the capabilities. Now frame motors can move just about any kind of block. Now without being a, moving a frame themselves they can move just about any block by itself but the block will not stick to anything. As we can see here the subsidian block is being moved side to side but it does not affect uh, these other blocks around it or even these frames which are not being moved by the motor. You can even uh, move some other items, like, say, a torch. It's kind of odd, but uh, yeah, you can do that. Now, as far as the things that frames can move, you can move chests, you can move things like torches. Even though these this torch is not on the frame, uh, the frame will still move it as well as things like this on this wall over here. You can see there's a ladder, there's a torch. The frames will move it uh, as long as the frame is adjacent to it. Now there are some exceptions to that and we'll go over that in just a little bit. Now you can even move things like uh, red powder motor, uh, machines I mean, like this. You can move pistons, you can move pipes. Now notice when the pipe moves it disconnects from this non-moving part, but then it reconnects again. So you can have um, machines on there that pass items through that pipe and they'll, they'll still be able to go in there just fine. Now, there are some exceptions. Now, for instance, uh, there's a, a few red power machines that the basically the working surface will not stick to frames like we've got a deployer, we've got a block breaker up there, and of course a blue electric motor. Those things are not moved by frames when they're facing the frame like that. Okay, and uh, this is just a demonstration here on how you'd make these. You've got uh, slabs. Now panels are important. 
we'll just go ahead and make a couple of these and then covers are also important and we'll go over that in a little bit so we've got some panels we've got some covers and those are uh, very important when it comes to dealing with frames and uh, I will cover how that matters okay so basically frames have three different modes for their surfaces they have their default mode which is just like this with nothing on them they will grab any adjacent block however they will not act as a solid block in other words you can't put torches on them you can't put ladders anything that needs a solid block to, to attach to it a redstone redstone uh, uh, or even red power wires they won't stick to that now if you put panels on it however if you put panels it will act as a solid block not not covers but panels and uh, I've actually uh, made a difference here panels are going to be iron covers will be gold and we'll go over those differences in just a bit so you can stick things like solar panels uh, tracks, red power wires, even logic gates on top of these blocks uh, or on the sides and whatnot and they will stick to it just fine. Alright. Also one more thing to note if there is something blocking the path and uh, let's, let's just go over that briefly like say we put a torch right there and this stopped moving. Do you know why it stopped moving? Well, I'm probably just going to break that thing now. Uh, it stopped moving, or it didn't move to the right, and, and I broke that ladder right there. Because this torch was blocking that redstone torch from moving to the right, and it kept the whole thing from, from not being able to move. So any obstruction will keep it from moving. Okay. So let's go over covers. Now covers, just like panels, they will act they will make the frame surface act as a solid block so you can attach things to it and whatnot. However, the main purpose of covers is to prevent the frame from sticking to other frames, other blocks, anything. They'll allow it just to, as you can see here, the track won't stick to it, the torch won't stick to it, uh, and you even if you had items on top of here, like say we put a piece of track, let's put a piece of track right there, and as it moves to the left, the track doesn't move. Now what happens if we put a piece of track like right here? It's going to break, because it does not grab that piece of track to go with it. Okay, and what else? So let's let's go into some more complex machines. Now you can have like this this here has frame motors attached to a frame and then those frame motors are moving another frame. Now note that when a frame motor is attached to a frame any frames that are on the surface of that frame motor will move along with the frame motor if the frame motor is moved along on a frame. So as it goes side to side here, the frame not only the frames move the motors, but it will also move the frame that's attached to the motor. So that's pretty much how you would build something fancy like a uh, mining rig or, you know, uh, some sort of uh, building machine, anything like that. Um, mostly, most likely be using like a mining machine or things like that. Um, but yeah, so yeah, there you go. There's some of the basics and uh, hope that helps you get started and understand some of the complexities and, and uh, limitations of the, the frames from Red Power and enjoy. See you guys next time. Hey everyone, quick addendum to the tutorial. Uh, a couple things I wanted to go over that I forgot to mention in the uh, main part of the tutorial. Uh, first of which is that uh, you'll notice the blue electric wires. Frames do require, require a blue electricity and uh, you can even see there is a little blue light on the side there that indicates that it's got enough power to, to operate. 
Now, uh, they do pull quite a bit of power, so I would highly recommend you have a couple of battery boxes nearby. Uh, make sure they have a steady supply of juice, because uh, otherwise your, your machines are going to malfunction due to lack of power. And uh, if they have special t specialized timing, it's going to mess them up. I actually had to redo this little tutorial world a couple times, fix some things because uh, the motors kept pulling too much power, and and then they started running into each other and, and causing a big mess. Uh, so, a couple other things I wanted to show you, um, such as the motor placement is kind of tricky, especially if you. Um, if you've already got a frame set up somewhere and you're adding some motors to it, I'm going to show you some tricks on how to get it uh, set up. Now, for me, the optimal configuration of these motors, and let me let me just show you how you rotate these. When you right-click on them, they spin, they rotate around. They face the same direction, but they rotate around. Now, if you want to change which direction the the side faces, the motor side, you'll have to shift-click. All right. So, the the best way I've found, uh, generally speaking, if you're going to have motors going back and forth, is to put them in this configuration, and that way the frame will never slide off the track completely. Uh, so the frame will get pushed, you know, in one direction and keep pushing it in one direction until finally uh, it's all you know, it's off of this motor and it's over this motor, and the only way it can go is to be pushed back. All right. So. Um, just to give you a quick tip on that. Now, the best way to do that, like say you, um, you've already got a frame set up, you're adding some motors to the side of it, and let's see you've got panels on here, so you can't really see which way they're oriented. If you orientate, orientate them like so, and then you're going to shift click, oops, shift click it until it's facing the opposite direction. Uh, in this case, just one click does it. Let me show you that again. So, the note that the arrows are facing away from each other. All right, you shift click them around to face the opposite direction, and now they're facing towards each other. All right, so that's one thing. Now, the other thing that I kind of failed to mention about the covers is they don't have to be gold or iron covers or panels. They can be other materials as well. I just use gold and um, iron just for clarity, make it easier to see. And when you place these covers on, you'll note that the covers actually overlap part of the frame, that side of the frame. And you can also combine different types of different materials within the frame. Now the only currently the only type of thing that can overlap a frame right now like this is covers and panels. You can't overlap other types of uh, things like tubes yet. That is apparently in the works. That's in the plans to add the ability to overlap tubes over frames. So it you know depending on when you watch this video that might already be something that's in the game. All right, and um, that's pretty much it. Just wanted to cover those uh, last little items, and uh, hope you have a good day.